And just as we've been speculating, I've been talking for months now about the aftermath of the Bad Batch. What's going to happen after the Bad Batch with these clones and with the animated series that inevitably is going to come by Dave Filoni. I think that the clones story is not over. And here comes D. Bradley Baker, the clone himself, the voice actor behind every single clone trooper that you love in animated version. Of course, in live action, that's Tamora Morrison. But let's not get into that. Let's talk about in a recent, recent interview just merely a couple of days ago, Bradley Baker talked to The Hollywood Reporter and he went on to talk about the tantalizing clone storylines that could be further explored. Guys, he has insider knowledge. If D. Bradley Baker is talking like this, then for sure he has talked to Dave Filoni about all of these clones knowing full well that their stories have not yet finished finished, not even close. So let's go immediately into the interview and then we're gonna dissect it. He went on to say to the Hollywood Reporter just a couple of days ago, he said, well, it's tantalizing, isn't it? Because a number of clones are still in play, including Echo. And he has a really remarkable story. He had a uniquely challenging story to overcome with how he's been put through the ringer when he was captured and then kind of reassembled as part machine. And yet he comes out of this with this this attitude of let's get back in there and let's make things better. And people really love that. So I'm encouraged that these threads are still open for storytelling. Like what happens to Clone Commander Cody? Where does Echo go? How do clones like Rex, Wolf, and Gregor end up together and then eventually end up in a fishing spaceship on a remote planet at some point? How do these things happen? Everybody wants to know because they love these clones. And love them we do, D. Bradley Baker and you might be jumping up and down with joy because he didn't just talk about Echo. He talked about Echo mostly, but he also mentioned, as you noticed, Commander Cody. He talked about Rex, Wolf, and Gregor. So you can see that the multitude of stories to be told from the clone's perspective during the Imperial times, them fighting against the Empire, is just magnificent. It's, it's a treasure trove for Dave Filoni. It's an invert of the Clone Wars series. During the Clone Wars, they were the main honchos. They were fighting against the Confederacy. But this time around, no man. They are the rebels. They are the grunt workers. They need to work in secret. It's a total invert of the Clone Wars. No longer do they have the almighty power of the Republic behind them. Now they need to figure it out for themselves against that former Republic, against the Empire. And the Bad Batch essentially tells us exactly that. It gives us hint as to what other clones have been up to with that finale scene, with the last last scene where an older Omega and an older Hunter are reminiscing and she leaves to meet up with whomever she is meeting up with and I have I think I have an idea and him talking about Echo seems to actually tell us that there is tragedy awaiting us especially with Echo the sad part is that years later when Omega's grown up Hunter is older they do not mention Echo at all even Omega who departs from the island does not mention that she is going to meet up with Echo or whatever she only mentions Wrecker and Crosshair so we know Wrecker and Crosser are alive. We know Hunter and Omega are alive, but Echo is not mentioned all these years later. To make matters worse, Echo is nowhere to be seen in Star Wars Rebels, where Rex, Wolf, and Gregor are now older and meet up with Ahsoka, meet up with Kanan Jarrah's Ezra, and the rebellion is essentially starting to ramp up. So does this actually mean that Echo is dead? He is not mentioned in the finale, in the final moments of the Bad Batch. He is not seen in Star Wars Rebels and never seen again. You know, I'm gonna be candid with you guys and this is the problem that I have mostly with, the, with this double-edged sword that is going on in canon because we love these characters we want to see them go well and if the finale of the Bad Batch proved anything is that you know not everything has to be dark and yes the ending of the Bad Batch was pretty satisfying and it gave us a hint of the future that we might see these characters again probably but this is constantly happening with canon now is that we have characters that are eventually shown to be alive even though they did not participate in these 
major battles or major events. So the double-edged sword, of course, is as you see with the Bad Batch, as you see with Ahsoka, as you see with Cal Kestis. The answer constantly is that they were not around. They disappeared somewhere into their own sanctuary. Now, piecing this together myself by watching what the content is showing us and all of these episodes, all of these stories are essentially telling us that these people, all these these guys, Omega, Hunter, Wrecker, Crosser, Ahsoka, Cal Kestis, all these people who we do not see in the original trilogy, who we do not see in other materials pertaining to the Imperial Times, they were so traumatized by the Empire they, that they just chose to completely absolve themselves, run away, and not participate in either rebellion activities, go up against the Empire, they just gave up. This is why we appreciate, of course, somebody like Captain Rex, who actively fought the Empire as we see during the Bad Batch. Then he, he made a comeback in Star Wars Rebels, and depending on what you want to believe, he even participated in the Battle of Endor. All this to say that, yes, there is a double-edged sword thing going on right now. We have new characters, we fall in love with these characters, we follow their storyline, but then there has to be this, where, well, where was he during this time? I know I'm doing it right now. I know the irony, believe me. But there, it is something that we need to talk about that needs to be addressed. Because it's getting frustrating to see that now, yes, these guys survived too, but they did not take place in these battles or these iconic moments. It's pretty frustrating, but opportunities are there. Maybe perhaps Omega did not take in the destruction of the second Death Star, let's say, but she might have contributed into, you know, getting the designs, getting the entry points, spying on the Empire, something that we did not get to see firsthand, but we will get to see once an animated series comes by. This is why we're so excited, of course, me, myself, I'm clamoring for a new clone series by Dave Filoni who will show us what Rex and Echo and the others are going through fighting the Empire. That would be just a beautiful, perfect series with ample, ample opportunities. Think about the missed opportunities we had in this finale. Darth Vader did not show up. I was completely expecting, of course, for Rex to show up. The cavalry has arrived. I thought that these guys would show up on Tantus, save the Bad Batch, save Omega. We have a clone rebellion on our hands and things are gotten so out of hand that Tarkin alerts Darth Vader. Darth Vader arrives. We saw that Tarkin made it to Tantus. But in the aftermath, nothing really interesting about Tarkin either. He just saw the project, he mentioned Stardust, so the funding was completely diverted from Tantus, which was now to be decommissioned and destroyed, and the funding for Stardust, aka the Death Star, was to be amped up. That's great and all, but think of how cool it would be in this new series for Rex to eventually meet up with Darth Vader, who has heard about these rebellious clones. He knows firsthand how it is fight side by side by clones, so Darth Vader knows his tactics, and he goes up against him, and only to find out that one of, the, one of his main foes is Captain Rex, his old clone captain and friend. Rex finding out that behind that mask is his old Jedi General, Anakin Skywalker, who, thought, who he thought was dead. Beautiful, beautiful storylines to still be told, and this is why I think this new series is completely crucial. In conclusion, I think that no, Echo is not dead. They just did not mention him. And this is why I'm saying this, because mentioning all these new series that I think we're going to see Rex in, that I think we're going to see Echo in and a lot more clones, essentially what we have found out is that canon will be expanded, but the true moments will remain true. Luke fought Darth Vader in front of the Emperor, Luke destroyed the Death Star. There's these moments where we saw them 40 years ago, we saw them 20 years ago, we're seeing them now, but these new storylines will take place in the buffer zone, in the area outside of this key moment. Perhaps while Omega is helping Lando destroy the Death Star, Luke is fighting Darth Vader. So Luke is surrendering to the Emperor. So all of this to say there's many, many more stories to be told. And yeah, I can't wait.